My family consists of Nathan, my husband. Fran, who's pretty amazing. Jess, my stepdaughter. Son, Quinn, and my son, Nash. Nash is five. Nash has Leash 9 syndrome. He's got some of the hardest challenges that you could imagine. But he is just a ray of sunshine. He's just such a joy. Super cheeky. Every day he has me laughing. He's, he's super cute. He's a, he's a gorgeous little boy. We have a lifestyle property. We always have a few sheep on the land, dogs, and we've got a cat. And we built ourselves a new house seven years ago. And then Nash came along and we had to do a massive renovation on it. Basically had to widen doorways, put in some ramps, um, create a whole another wing for Nash, really. He's got, like, special needs. His legs don't work as good as us. He's a good little brother. He takes a bit of, like, extra care, but we love him all the same. Nash understands everything that we're talking about all the time. His class is having global developmental delay, but, I mean, that's so general. <laughs> um, and I think it's just, his body just lets him down. <laughs> he was born in New Plymouth on uh, the 6th of the 6th, um, 2017. Normal pregnancy, birth, nothing complicated at all. Um, just was a normal baby. When he was about six months old, he was just in agony. So we ended up spending 10 days in hospital. Our paediatrician up there had actually done her thesis on Lesh 9 syndrome. So she checked his uric acid levels in his blood and yeah, it was confirmed that it was Lesh 9 and yeah, it was a pretty horrific day. <laughs> You just couldn't think of anything worse if you tried, you know, like, basically his body can't process the uric acid, and so that turns into kidney stones. So when he was one, we got rushed up to Starship. They operated on him the next morning, and they took seven kidney stones, and it was terrifying. Very lucky he didn't go into kidney failure. He has episodes of pain. They can be totally random, so he could just be sitting watching TV and be fine, and the next minute he'll be just so distraught. There's times you're sitting there with tears rolling down your face and your little boy's there in so much pain, screaming, and there's nothing you can do for him. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty tough. <laughs> he is on CBD oil, which has been great. Point four mils of CBD and THC mixed, and then this one here is just straight CBD. It helps with his dystonia sometimes, the way his movements are. Hey. You know, you know. <laughs> it just helps with his mood a lot. It just, it just really chills him out. Oh, yeah. So Nash has got what they call low tone, so he hasn't got that core strength to sit up and hold his head up. So he relies on his dystonia. You'll see a lot of Nash's movements. His arms will be straight. He hasn't really got that fine motor control. Yeah, it's, it's pretty limited, to be honest. He can shuffle around on the floor. Basically, he's in the wheelchair. We push him around. So Nash can't play with a lot of normal toys. So any experience of that will make his life more fun or just new. Red note. We're going to beat Quinn, eh? We're going to beat Jess as well. Seatbelt. Looking pretty good. Good work, monkey. Really? Conductive education has been an amazing family to us. It organised a bit of a session at Naki Nitro with carts. Nash loves doing that stuff. Yeah, you get him in that cart and he's been present in the moment. It's not about him being in a wheelchair or something. He's racing around the track with everyone else. He might look like he's petrified, but I know <laughs> on the inside he, he's, he's having fun and he's pretty excited by it. We've had him up in a couple of helicopters, horse riding, we go bowling. So yeah, it's all about experiences for him. Good fun, it gets him out of his comfort zone, but it gets to a certain point. 
you just know that it's, it's time to give up. You're just fighting a losing battle, so... Let's go put your back in your chair. So Nash's future for me is about creating these little snippets of time, whether it's out in the boat fishing for a day or, you know, just creating a positive environment, creating moments. So yeah, this is Nash's nightly routine. We um, put an ibuprofen, um, a bottle of Fortini and, and just a flush. So he would give this to him before he, he goes to bed and it goes on through his peg, which is where all of his, um, most of his nutrition goes. Yes, yeah, so before we got the peg put in, Nash was, was really un underweight. And um, it was just a never ending battle, just trying to get food into him and um, we, we were just struggling. But once we put that peg in, man, we're just able to control the whole situation. We give him 200 mils, his tummy can only handle 200 mils at a time, and he has that um, six times a day. But um, yeah, Nash is pretty tired tonight, so he's a bit grizzly. Let's go, mate. Bed time. Here's a fish. Where is he? So here, fish, 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 fish. Here they come. Look at how look. Nash needs to have two litres of fluid a day. So this is to try and dilute the uric acid in his system to try and stop the kidney stones from forming. Um, so this is a pump that pumps fluid through him every night while he's sleeping. You know, like with Nash getting 800 mils a night, two nappies, every day basically we've got a got washing to do because it, it leaks through. Oh. 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 Good. You go, you nummy. Know we put a weighted blanket on him every night too, which is like a big cuddle. We've had one of those since he was really little. So just turn this on. Pretty tired after a big day, and you just want to go to bed yourself. But sometimes you got to sit here for three quarters an hour, and it's um, no. pretty tough going sometimes. But he's been pretty good lately. No one in New Zealand has ever worked with a child with Leash Nine Syndrome, except for now, of course. So um, he's got cerebral palsy. He gets kidney stones and he's got super low tone so he's not able to sit up. Good noon. Some mornings he gets up, he's super edgy and super hard work, you know, he's just arching all the time, so generally we just get that CBD into him s straight away. He does have his moments, of course, because he gets frustrated, um, but that happens quite a lot. <laughs> He finds the strangest things funny. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Anything he doesn't like and needs off his tongue, he just sticks his tongue out and you have to get it off. Yeah, full of life, full of positivity. I'm, I'm proud to be his dad. It's awesome. Yay! Yay! We have a mobility van, so he travels in his wheelchair and the van So conductive education is a um, Hungarian therapy, which is specifically for kids with neurological disabilities. So he goes once a week and has done since he was one. And it's just a really beautiful community of people that all have children with pretty high needs. Olivia, she's lovely. They've been doing conductive together for about three years. Whoa, look! They're just great mates. Both have different abilities, but they just gel together and love each other. You know, it's great. Do you remember <gasps> that two weeks ago, oh. we had a look at this book? That's what did right. we do? Planted some beans. Planted some beans, that's right. Conductive education is a holistic approach to special education. It was developed for people with motor disorders where um, the challenges and the, the 
the problems that these people are facing are caused by a damage or an injury to the central nervous system. Here, is that comfy? Oh. I have one with tiny dots. This is what it feels like. Oh. You. I have one with bigger bumps. We are going to tickle your foot with it. First, the right foot. So this exercise prepares him to pull the feet under, keeping them flat is the first very important part of being able to stand up and wait bare through the feet. So this exercise, as he's pulling his heel closer to his hips, bending his knees, very similar to the movement that you would be doing in sitting, getting your feet under you to stand up. We are breaking down all these more complex movements into bite-sized uh, activities for the children. We practice them isolated, and then we combine them later on during the session, and that's how we build it up. So how did it feel under your foot? <laughs> did he? Really? Yeah. Are you hiding too? <gasps> oh, oh, yeah. oh, is your head? Peekaboo! <laughs> the ultimate goal is to increase um, participants' independence. Mm. Can you roll it over the side? Push the ball. <laughs> We're gonna push it towards mommy. Um, for some people, that increased independence is going to enable them to maintain their sitting for five minutes. For another person, that will mean walking up Mount Taranaki one day. Let's move your hand closer. I think um, education, as much as it is important for Nash, it's actually just about him enjoying his life. And that's our philosophy for everyday life, really. Um, as much as it's hard sometimes, and you can get bogged down in it. There's Spidey and the dino. What does Spidey have to say about it? I think he's just finding his own way about things as well and trying to help him be the best that he can be, but also just accepting him for who he is. The self-harming behaviour, it's atrocious, really. It's a little bit like Tourette's where, you know, they can't help but act out in those behaviours. The self-harming behaviour is definitely the hardest part to deal with. We don't really understand it. There's no one really does. But they say that it's with the way that Eric acts that affects his brain. So it's like he has this compulsion to hurt himself and others. So if there's things around him that he knows that he'll hurt himself on, like he'll just continuously try to do that. It becomes like a compulsion. Um, so he'll um, just keep doing it and doing it until you're not in the um, until you're not in harm, he's not in harm's way anymore. So we had to sort of clear the area and like if, if Nash is playing on the floor and he can wiggle his way over like to the to, to the car tracks, he'll um, he'll start yelling out for help and start crying because even before he hurts himself, he knows that it's coming and and, and he can't stop it. Um, there's a wall there. If Nash is on sitting, sitting on, on, on your knee. He'll um, throw his head back and, you know, he's dished out a fair few black eyes and um, bleeding noses. We actually refer to it as the leash nyan behaviour. It's a thing, you know, it's not Nash. It's something that takes over him. Quite <laughs> He's trying to make him I know. Hey, Nash. We'll get on the tramp, hey? <laughs> Pretty much the day after he turned four, he started biting really badly the inside of his mouth. A lot of children around the world with leash and iron actually like bite the tops of their fingers off. He had beautiful teeth and a beautiful smile. And, you know, looking back on those photos is, is, is pretty hard. It seems like the toughest thing to do at the time is actually make that call to get the teeth removed. But once we got the teeth taken out, he was so much happier because you actually take away one of the things that he can hurt himself with. I think the main reason that he enjoys being out on the tramp is just, it's just family time, you know? And there's so many things that he can't do because he can't run around the house after his brother, but this is something that they can all do together and it's pretty special. I'm extremely proud of Quinn and Jess. They've both been amazing right from the early stages and they've been able to adapt to the situation and work around Nash. I'm extremely proud of them. Would I just be quite silly to make him 
laugh and feel better when he's crying. And if he needs something, you're always quite fast to go and get it to help him, eh? Yeah. And also, if he does something right, like comes to me in the walker, since I'm re really, since I've got a lot of money, I give him some money. does lots of picking up and dropping off at school, which is great, um, as well as just being here so that I can get other things done. She'll just come and sort of entertain Nashi while we get other bits and pieces done. So at the moment she's been playing with him so that I can get dinner made. I am on call and I wouldn't change it for the world. Since he's been born, my life's changed. I never expected to be so involved because, you know, that's their little family. So they can't plan ahead, they, they have to live day to day. You can't just go to a barbecue and uh, and let your kids run around and play. You know, one of us has always got to be on, on point with Nash, really. We just can't go to a lot of places with Nash. Whenever we're going anywhere, we usually work out what's best for the family and Nash, do things around his feeding, his medications, because Nash likes to be in a stable environment. Did you get some? Did you get some? Yeah. Yay, another one? Yeah. He's, he's a crack up. He just has me laughing all the time. Go. She's definitely a big helper and a great emotional support as well. You know, she sees the, um, the ups and the downs, so. So we are off to Henwood Kindy, where Nash goes four mornings a week. He has one-on-one -on -one people working with him. We're meeting Sam, Nash's carer, at Kindy this morning. Right. Hi. Hello, Hello darling. How are you doing? Who's that? Are you good? Oh. Sam. <laughs> yeah, what have you been up to? Oh. Off the deck. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Then. So Sam is his carer, um, and she's been working with us all, all year this year. Yeah. <laughs> Sam's great. She just met Nash, and they just hit it off straight away. And she just, like, she always talks about it as she's just hanging out with him. Which way now? Do you want to go up here? No. you want to go to that one? Yeah. OK, the hard one. He just loves her. They go on adventures all the time. She looks after Nash as if he's her own. Yeah, the bond that they've got is pretty special. Do you want this one? And then I'm going to go for a dive into the water. I met Nash and we clicked. Like, we have our own little language. <laughs> now, nah, what are they up to? Having a spa? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just get on like a house on fire. He's got a great sense of humour and we're always laughing and giggling about silly things. But I love it. Like, now he's just my primary yeah. job is Nash. And, yeah, he's like my little buddy now. And if we have breaks, I miss him. They're just a great, loving, caring family. They, you know, a lot's done for them, but they do a lot for others. They give as much as they can. Sam's just great. And is just really involved and love them. At the end of the day, that's all I want anyone to do, is just to love them. Dinner's up. Come on, you Our lives revolve around trying to keep it together, really, making sure that our family is at the centre point of our of everything, all the time. Nash, is that yum? Is it sauce? Oh. It's pretty complex, but... If you don't work at it, yeah, asking for troubles. Making sure that we get the time on our own to get out there, do the things that fill up our cups. We've got to look after ourselves to look after Nash. Thank you. <laughs> Are you catching lots of fish? Nash was coming out fishing with us in the boat and he'd be holding on to the fishing rod and he'd hook up a fish and we'd have to wind in his fish. So I wanted Nash to be in a position where he can wind his own fish in. So I got a surprise for Nash today. His rod and reel has arrived, and we've got the boat modified, so everything's all ready to go. 
Oh my gosh, you got a dugga dugga nose. You gonna put this on? You go. Are you gonna wind it up? What you gotta do is push the blue one, and that makes the line go down. Do you wanna push it? And we'll pretend Quinn's the bait going down. We'll see if we can catch a fish off Quinn, eh? What do you reckon? <laughs> okay, can you push the blue one? Push the blue one. Big hit. Quinn's taking the line out, so the line's going all the way to the bottom. You wind it up, no. Put the yellow one. Yeah, that's it. Look, that's it. You wind it up. No shame. Good work. How much times did you press it? Twice. Um, it's kind of the main focus for us is, is giving Nash as, as many adventures as we can, you know, not being constrained to the chair or to the fall, but getting outside and doing stuff where possible. Yeah, we've been super lucky with the community. Um, when they say it takes a village to raise a child, it, it really does when you've got a child with, um, with, with some challenges. <laughs> Got a spa pool through the Make a Wish Foundation, which is pretty epic. He loves going in the water, and it's really nice. It's like therapy for him, you know. He can kick freely. I think you're getting splashed by um... Yeah, it, it is special. It's weightlessness, you know. We can hold him up and kick those legs. We don't know how long we've got him for, and so we're just trying to live the best life that we can. The average life expectancy for a child with leash nine is actually just early teens. So, yeah, we just have to live with that. We certainly don't let it take over. We, you can't. Even though they've had these terrible, terrible challenges, they've got stronger and stronger. They're amazing. I'm, I'm just so proud of them. They're an amazing couple. It's amazing what we've been able to achieve with the family and the challenges we've gone through with Nash and, and to still be together. You know, we could be crumbled messes. Yeah, I'm not saying that we're not <laughs> some days, but we try our best and to be positive, and that's all that we can do.